Acurex Pharmaceuticals is a NASDAQ listed pharmaceutical company working on some of the most common bacterial infections, including C. diff. And with me is CEO and President David Lucci. I bring us up to date on the latest clinical trial. So where are you uh, with the C. diff drug? I know that you've uh, met with the FDA and you have something going on there. So bring us up to date. Yes, indeed. And uh, thank you, Jane. It's great to be uh, back with you uh, at the NASDAQ. Um, so. We uh, did meet with the FDA, uh, had our post phase two clinical meeting, ironed out our phase three uh, clinical trial mandate. Uh, we're about to file uh, our manufacturing package with the FDA. Um, as, as you may know, uh, you also have to meet with the FDA uh, on manufacturing uh, to go to phase three. So it's all in order. It's as clean as a whistle and uh, we'll be filing that next week. Okay. Um, and that meeting will occur uh, within 30 days of the filing. Um, and then we'll be uh, totally ready to go with uh, inventory coming out um, in the second half of this year. Uh, so that's, that's tremendous. We also have our new patent, which uh, the USPTO has now uh, validated uh, what we've been saying, which is that while we're curing the direct C. diff infection, we're able to fully restore the healthy uh, gut microbiome uh, in the process, which is uh, absolutely opposite of most antibiotic therapies. Why antibiotics get a bad name? They cause dysbiosis or uh, perturbation uh, of the healthy bacteria in the gut, which is how they got the C. diff in most cases in the first place. Okay. So we're able to cure the C. Uh, here, here comes C our antibiotic. We're curing the C. diff and restoring the microbiome, yeah. which prevents uh, other diseases. So the USPTO looked at the data. They agreed that it was novel and unexpected, and that patent goes out to June 2042. Wow. So it's an amazing amount of time. That's um, interesting. So we're really putting the building blocks in place as we prepare for phase three, the final steps. Um, and you know, th th that brings us to our partnership uh, discussions. What we're attempting to do is to pay for phase three through a series of uh, territorial partnerships around the world. Yeah. We started that process in May. It's going very well. We have many conversations ongoing, everything from M&A discussions to South American and European partnership discussions, Japanese discussions. And uh, what we're trying to do is to pay for as much of the phase three uh, program as possible non-dilutively okay. so that our shareholders don't lose all or nearly all of the upside mm. potential in the process of uh, raising the money to pay for phase three. So in other words, I don't want to leave shareholders in a position where we do a massive amount of dilutive equity financing. Yeah. And then it, at that point, it doesn't matter if phase three, to some extent, doesn't matter if it's successful or it fails. Right. Even if it's successful, you've been blown to smithereens. Right, you have so much more to make up the that's ground, so that's exactly really right. interesting. So it's a harder pathway, but I think it's going to be worthwhile and worth doing. And uh, since we know we have a drug yeah. and the FDA is behind us, the USPTO is behind us, mm. we just have to do the hard work of doing the non-dilutive financing. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask about that because this, there's so much process and time that it takes with the FDA and all the trials and it costs so much money and you still have to you know operate your business and you have to have a pretty long runway to be able to get through all of this so this absolutely is how you plan to do it yeah that's how we plan to do it and we keep the staff small uh, for just four employees the GNA is incredibly tight mm -hmm. um, so almost all the money that we have we use uh, for our drug development activities okay um, and we also have some grant applications that uh, are in process that uh, could make a difference. Yeah, so let's um, just back up for a second and talk about C. diff. We just kind of jumped right into it and I've yeah, done so no many problem. interviews with you. Um, explain the problem that you're trying to solve and how big of a market could this potentially be? So C. diff, uh, even during the COVID years, it uh, was measured as about a $1.5 billion market in the U.S. alone. Mm -hmm. um, it's growing to $2.2 billion. Um, new estimates, new data from the CDC that I put out on my LinkedIn just this morning. Um, it's showing a sharp rise in C. diff, even from those numbers. And that's because of all the hospitalizations related to COVID um, had concomitant antibiotic treatments, which make antimicrobial resistance or AMR more of an acute pandemic than it had been. 
Um, so the need is, if anything, getting more and more significant. And it's, in my, in my opinion, it's given our data, it's attracting partners to us. Mm -hmm. And there's international potential as well. This is a problem everywhere. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And with our cost of goods um, being so low, um, we have the opportunity to, to price relatively high in big wealthy countries like the US. Um, but in other countries, it could be priced wherever is comfortable and the cost of goods is is very flexible. It's very okay. cheap and simple to make. So next step, the FDA getting all that plan together for phase three. Yes, and immediately after that, when we have the CMC and the, and the uh, clinical worked out completely with the FDA, the immediate next step is going to the European Medicines Agency okay. to make sure they're fully on board. And when we have that in minuted uh, meeting minutes, we will have that to share with partners as well. Okay, anything else you wanna share about what you've been up to? Well, as a new hobby, um, I was asked to be in the University of Florida in a, uh, UF Innovate mentorship program. Uh -huh. I have these uh, eight, uh, <laughs> socks on. Okay. Yeah, socks, yeah. And, and what I'm doing is, as part of our way to give back, um, I'm trying to help young students who have scientific innovation um, to get to the next step to grow their business so, so that we can kind of share our experiences in our generation with the next generation so that we can continue to have life-saving medicines in the future. Oh no, I mean that's a great idea because I feel like a lot of college kids have a great idea uh, but they don't know how the business side of it, how to execute it, all the clinical trials, <laughs> raising money, I mean yep. all those other things so exactly. you can help guide them with that. Absolutely, looking forward to it. It's a, it's a, a, a life thing for me. Um, yeah. You know, I left the law firm uh, 20 years ago now, and I feel like uh, we're making a difference, leaving the world a better place than where we found it. Yeah. David, thank you so much for the update. Thank you, Jane. Thanks.